Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be looking at this language, which is the halting problems, which is formally called HALT TM, which is the set of all pairs of Turing machines M with an input W such that M halts on input W. So that means that it either accepts or rejects. We don't care which one. As long as it outright accepts or rejects, then we put this pair inside of HALT TM, the HALT TM language. Remember that these are always sets of strings because they're just languages. So what we want to show is that this, is, this language is undecidable. So for those of you who don't know or haven't seen this before, undecidable means there's no algorithm for HALT TM. No matter how clever you think you are, there, in designing an algorithm for it, it either doesn't work or doesn't run in a finite amount of time because every algorithm runs in a finite amount of time. So how would you actually show that something is undecidable? Well, there are two main strategies, one that you may use. You can either show that is undecidable by supposing it's decidable, then showing a known undecidable problem to be decidable under the assumption that this one is decidable. That's one route. And the other direction or the other possible route is to use Rice's theorem. But we can't use Rice's theorem here because that requires the strings in here to represent single machines and here they represent a machine and an input. So we can't use Rice's theorem here, unfortunately. So what can we actually do here? Well, what we can do is to use a known undecidable problem. So what we're going to assume here is that ATM, which is the language MW, where M accepts W, we're going to assume that this is undecidable because it is. And uh, why do we want to use this language? Well, we got to use some undecidable problem first. And this one is a reasonable candidate to pick because the condition on whether MW is in this language or this one is very similar between the two. This one is it accepts W, and this one is it either halts an input W, it, uh, either it accepts or rejects W. So here's what we're going to do here. So how do we prove this, that HALT TM is undecidable? Well, we want to assume that it is decidable, then, under that assumption, make a decider for ATM. So the problem with ATM and showing that it's decidable is the easiest way to do it is just to run the machine M on W, but the Turing machine could run forever. So what we can do here is, if we had a way to figure out whether the machine halts on the input W to start with, then we can decide what actually happens on input w, oh, with M on W. So let's suppose that we're going to have a, a machine called H decides the language halt TM. So this machine H, if I give it an input M and W, I'm supposing that in some finite amount of time, it'll tell me whether the Turing machine accepts the input or not. And so now let's build a decider for the language ATM. So remember, ATM must take uh, input MW right here. So on input I gotta keep remember to turn off these notifications. On input MW, where M is a Turing machine and W a string. Well, if I just um, try to run the machine M on W, again, it could run forever. So let's utilize this decider H to figure out whether the machine even stops or not. So let's run h on m w well h will either say it does halt or it doesn't because we're supposing that it decides uh, this machine decides that language so let's suppose that h rejects so if h rejects then that says that m does not uh, will run forever on input w which 
implicitly says that the machine will implicitly reject w just by running forever. It never accepts w. So for the question of whether we're m accepts w, if h rejects, m does not stop on input w, so it never accepts in that case. So here we can actually say reject, because um, we want to say accept only when m actually explicitly accepts w. In every other case, it just we should say reject, even if it runs forever. So then here, if h doesn't reject, in, which means that it accepts, which this implies that m does stop on w, it doesn't run forever. So this, what we can say here is that m does stop on w. Well now we can be certain that it stops on w, so now we can actually run the machine on input w. So let's actually run m on w this time. So just run the machine because we know that it will stop here based on the assumption that h will reject before. So if we make it to this step, that means h said that the machine will stop on, the, on w. So then now all that we need to do is to output the same answer. So whatever m says on w, we're going to do the exact same thing. If m accepts w, then we're going to say accept. If m just plain outright rejects w, then we'll just reject in the exact same way. And we know if we make it to step three, one of those two will happen because we saw that h told us if we get to this step, it, the machine will stop on input w. Well, now let's actually figure out whether we can even build this machine. Well, we can do step one based on the supposition. So the supposition here told us that H exists. It's a decider for halt TM, so we can actually do this step in a finite amount of time. Well, these two steps run in a finite uh, amount of time because, well, step two is pretty clearly going to run in a finite amount of time. Step three does because H guarantees that M will stop on input W. It can't run forever because if it did, we would have stopped in step two above. And then step four obviously runs in a finite amount of time too. So that would imply that ATM is decidable because if H is decidable, then we can build this machine that runs in a finite amount of time, which implies that ATM is decidable. But we know that ATM is undecidable. So this implies that um, the decider H here cannot exist because if it did then we could build this machine which is a contradiction. So this means that H does not exist which implies that halt TM is undecidable. So there is no algorithm at all to figure out whether an arbitrary program, or Turing machine in this case, will stop on a particular uh, input that is given to it. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you were able to find that out a different way. There is a way that you could prove halt TM undecidable directly, and I invite you to figure out how that's possible. There's yet another way that could be done if you happen to know how to get the the source code of the Turing machine during the running of the Turing machine itself. If you know how to do that, it turns out you can show that this is undecidable that way too. So if you found it out in a different way, please leave a comment explaining how you did it. Otherwise, I would appreciate if you liked and subscribed to the channel. It costs nothing and will really help support the channel. Recently, we've gotten uh, more uh, gold supporters on my Patreon page. Link in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, I'll see you next time.